question that I get all the time is how long does drug withdrawal last? So in this video, we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna give you some answers but make sure that you stay tuned to this entire video because I'm gonna give you some suggestions as to how to speed up this process just a little bit. So stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And welcome to another beautiful day during Mental Health Awareness Month. And yeah, in this video, we're gonna be talking about drug withdrawal, all right? I know a lot of you uh, come here for addiction recovery stuff, some of you are trying to get clean, some of you uh, are worried about how long drug withdrawal is gonna last. And by the way, I'm gonna talk about some very, very important stuff, so make sure that you share this video because someone out there might be afraid to get clean because they don't know how long withdrawal will last. I wanna start this video by talking about what is drug withdrawal? What is it and how does it happen, all right? So just some basic science about this thing is the human body is always trying to maintain equilibrium, okay? It's always trying to find balance. So with all of your organs and like your nervous system and all these things, like whatever you are taking into your body, your body's like, oh, what's this? Okay, I gotta adjust a little bit. So when you start using anything in excess, your body has to readjust to find a new normal. So this is why you can even have like caffeine withdrawal or sugar withdrawal if that's something that you're taking in constantly. So when you're using drugs or alcohol even, your body is trying to regain this equilibrium. So it's like, okay, well this you know, guy or girl is taking in a lot of drugs and alcohol, I need to figure out how to readjust. So once that your body finds that new state of equilibrium, it doesn't know how to respond when it's not coming into the body anymore. So once the alcohol or drugs begins to uh, metabolize in your system, the body starts to freak out. So depending on what substance you use, the withdrawal symptoms can be different. So there are certain drugs that have uh, only psychological symptoms of withdrawal or mainly psychological symptoms of withdrawal. And these are typically stimulants, okay? So we're talking about uh, different forms of cocaine, of meth, and things like that. That is going to give you uh, psychological withdrawals primarily. So we're talking about irritability, depression, anxiety, insomnia, and things like that. This can even happen with prescription stimulants like like uh, Adderall and Ritalin and things like that, okay? Now, with other substances, you'll have both psychological as well as physical symptoms of withdrawal. These are alcohol, opiates, opioids, benzodiazepines. This is going to mess up your mental as well as your physical state. So what that means is, is not only are you gonna have the psychological stuff, like the irritability, the anxiety, the depression, um, the uh, insomnia, but you're also going to have, you know, aches and pains, you might have nausea, you might have the body tremors and be shaken all over the place. Some people get restless leg. Um, when it comes to benzodiazepines, there's a high risk of seizure as well, just based on what the brain uh, is doing to try to regain balance, it can make you seize. This is why I always say like, get medical help. If you are trying to detox, like you shouldn't do it on your own because it can be dangerous. And just about with any substance across the board, there is a high risk of elevated heart rate and blood pressure, okay? This is another reason why it's always good to get some kind of medical attention. I know a lot of people wanna do a cold turkey and I get it, I did it too, um, but I was seeing a doctor as well and I was on a lot of blood pressure medications. So even with drugs like uh, cocaine and meth, you know, when the body is trying to regain uh, equilibrium, there's a lot of stress on the heart because when you're having anxiety, for example, you're your heart is going like bah, 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 and it's freaking out, all right? So this is kind of why withdrawal happens. You get a bunch of neurotransmitters misfiring in your head and all sorts of stuff happens, especially with the nervous system, okay? So that's what withdrawal is, that's why it happens. Now, why you're all here, the main, the main part of this video, the question I always get, how long does drug withdrawal last, all right? So the problem is, is that you're probably not gonna like my answer. And the truth is, I don't have an answer for you, but don't leave yet, do not leave yet, because I'm gonna give you some suggestions at the end of this video as to how to help speed up the process. But I get this question constantly, constantly. For those of you who don't know me, I work at a drug and alcohol rehab center, we do detox, but I also meet a lot of people who are trying to get clean and they've been off of it for like one, two, three days a week and they're like, how long is this gonna last? And I typically try to stay away from answering that question and any ethical professional will stay pretty far away from that question. And here's why. 
when it comes to withdrawal symptoms, it is completely, completely dependent on the person for a wide range of reasons. One of them, as we just discussed, is the substance that you're using. Depending on the substance that you're using, you'll have different withdrawal symptoms. The other one is how much you were using, okay? How much you were using and how long you were using. But the biggest one of them all, which makes withdrawal unique to each person is your own personal biology, your genetic makeup, right? Your history of other illnesses, um, anything else that goes on with your physical body as well as your brain and different symptoms of mental illness, withdrawal can be different for other people. Like for me personally, if any of you watch my opiate withdrawal video, like the main nightmare of withdrawal was during my first week, okay? After that, the symptoms started to go away. I still had like stomach issues for a while and things like that. But for me, I was very, very fortunate to only have a really last like, um, where it was ridiculously brutal for like a week. Now, for other people, I've seen it last for weeks. I've seen people also struggle with something called post-acute withdrawal syndrome. Sometimes you might hear this as pause, okay? So you gotta think about all the stuff we've been screwing up in our brain and in our body, and the body needs some time to heal and catch up. So with pause, sometimes like you'll start, fe start feeling fine for a little while and then boom, symptoms of withdrawal come back. Now, they're not as bad, okay? Like a lot of the physical stuff is gone, but a lot of people experience, you know, the anxiety, um, depression, the insomnia. There are some symptoms, some people experience like stomach cramping, they'll experience uh, nausea, they might get restless leg, they might get cold sweats, but it is not nearly as bad as when you first come off of it, all right? So unfortunately, I wish I can give you like a magic number and this is something that I realized with a bunch of us addicts. Like, we wanna know when. We wanna know when, we wanna know when. And I'll make other videos about like, um, what I'm really talking about when it comes to like, when is my family gonna trust me again? When are people gonna forgive me for what I did? Like, and the thing is about recovery is that we can't always have an answer for that. It's impossible to. But the reason why it screws with our head is because when we drank or used drugs, we knew, I'm gonna use this, it's gonna kick in like that, and boom. But the reality is life doesn't work like that. So we have to be patient. The good news is, now we're gonna get into the good news. The good news is I've never met anybody who experienced withdrawal for the rest of their life. It never lasts forever, it doesn't last forever. So while I know that you want answers to this, just know this, it's not gonna last forever, okay? So use that information as a motivation to stay clean until it goes away, all right? But now, I'm gonna give you a few suggestions as to how to make your, your withdrawal a little bit easier and maybe speed up the process. First one is medications, okay? Medications, you're gonna have to see a doctor for this. So depending on what you're coming off of, um, the most familiar ones that you probably have heard of is like Suboxone, and that's for opiates, okay? So what this does, it helps trick the brain into thinking that you're still using, and then you gradually taper off. This can greatly help with withdrawal. I always recommend a, a shorter taper rather than a longer one, because if you're on Suboxone for months and months and months, you're gonna go through the withdrawal uh, the same way, all right? Same thing with something like methadone. All these um, should be tapered very, very quickly. And I don't mean like a day, I'm talking like maybe like one to four weeks, depending on who you are. Um, I've heard of some doctors recommending like, like two years, like that is baffling to me. You should never do that uh, because you're just gonna go right back in that cycle and a lot of people end up relapsing on harder drugs like heroin because of it. Um, but there are also um, medications uh, for alcohol withdrawal and basically, what happens when you're seeing a doctor for it, you get these other medications that not only help with the withdrawal symptoms to make those minimized, but they'll also help with other symptoms of like anxiety, depression, insomnia, and things like that. Like I was on, um, uh, a sleep medication when I first got clean because I couldn't sleep, you know what I mean? So you should always seek medical help. Like, what I teach my clients is this. It is 2018. Like, we are given a gift that so many people didn't have even 30, 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, take advantage of this stuff. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. I also say this to my clients. Like, nobody gives you like a gold medal for doing this cold turkey and without help. Like, we don't have like an annual, like, a addiction recovery like award ceremony and we're like and now for the the best person who did this cold turkey like none of that stuff like who are you trying to impress just go get help from a doctor all right nobody thinks you're cool i'm sorry for the tough love
Okay, now aside from that, nutrition. Nutrition is a big one too. So you gotta understand you've done a lot of damage to your body, to your nervous system, uh, your brain, and things like that. Like eating, healthy is going to help. If you keep eating junk food, you're going to prolong the withdrawal process, okay? Remember, like natural foods, like stuff that comes from the earth, that's not processed, whole foods, these are going to help heal your body and they're also going to heal your mind. If any of you saw my video I did the other day, um, on the book review, Unblank Your Brain. Uh, that doctor, Dr. Faith Harper, please go check her out on Instagram and her website and stuff because she is like a specialist when it comes to natural remedies and these will greatly help you with withdrawal. If not, just go Google some stuff, okay? And lastly, I'm gonna say movement. Exercise, being physical, this is going to help as well, okay? So when I say this, like go for a walk every day, get into a very, very light fitness class, do things like yoga. This is gonna help regenerate muscle tissue and it will also help to heal uh, your jacked up nervous system. Yoga is amazing for this, okay? Or do some light aerobics, go swimming, do whatever you gotta do, all right? So these are three different ways to help speed up the withdrawal process because I know you're impatient, I know you're impatient. So when you just wanna lay in bed and just oh, in your aches and pains, don't. Get out, get moving, see a doctor, eat right, and I guarantee it will get better. But like I said too, just know that withdrawal never lasts forever, all right? So anyways, please, please, please do me a favor in honor of National Mental Health Awareness Month, like please share this video, share this video so people know that going through withdrawal is just a very, very small piece of time in order to live this amazing life in recovery, okay? So please share this on social media, all right? But anyways, that's all the information I got for you today. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos not only about addiction and recovery, but also about mental health. Make sure you click that little round subscribe button. If you want to see some more videos on my channel, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails, okay? Thanks so much for watching. Withdrawal doesn't last forever, and I'll see you next time.